By the last day of practice, Haslam is second fastest, but teammate Joey Dunlop has had handling problems. The Honda mechanics continue to make critical adjustments to wring every last drop of speed out of Haslam's bike, as Grant and his Suzuki lead in practice with a Formula One lap record of 114 miles an hour. Managers, mechanics, girlfriends and wives all have their part to play. Mick's wife Carol is a practiced veteran of the backup team. I want to be part of the team. I can't stand at the pits chewing my fingernails what's going on. I'd rather be um, doing the times and signal board and that sort of thing, making sure he's got everything that he needs that the mechanics sort of don't think about. Like a drink when he comes in. <laughs> I don't get much of a thrill watching him go around the Isle of Man, actually. Um, it's so far around and you never know what's going on. There's so many things that can happen. Um, in fact, it, it's the only circuit that does sort of worry me. It's, it's racing doesn't really worry me on the short circuits, but it, it does over here. I, I met her after we started racing, so she's really not known anything different. She does get worried about the Isle of Man. I think possibly the only circuit really she does worry about. Um, it must be terrible for people watching, you know, there's the sort of, the 20 minutes before the, you're around again. And very often if you do stop for a mechanical failure even, it could be another half hour after that before the people in the pits know what's happened. And of course the mind run wild. Tension mounts in the Suzuki camp. Roger Marshall is late returning from a practice lap, the first hint of a near disaster. Marshall's ashen face tells the whole story. He has seen the fangs of the TT course and lived to tell the tale. When something like that happens, it's very, very frightening. The fairing was jammed against the front wheel, so it left a groove in the front tyre and uh, gave me a bit of a heart attack, basically. I th Mick had an earlier thing in the week where these new tight fairings were, where they're a bit lightweight and it just pulled through the bobbins. But all my bobbins are okay and we've got them plated and and uh, one of the new type bobbins and it pulled out of that is a manufacturing fault on it. I hit the f***ing bank on the right on the shoulder and I'd never even eat up, I couldn't turn the bank on the all locked up. The fairing had locked on the front wheel. And the next thing, I hit the bank on the right, it bounced me off, I was just getting ready to go over the front down the bar, hit the curb on the left, and then, then, the, then I f***ing went smashed me f***ing down the down the hood, and I forced the steering to the left. Was it handling any better? Nah, terrible. Mine's not too good to mine. No, I'm going back to how I had it real hard when I did 112. Not handling good like that? No, awful. High-speed mechanical failure is every rider's worst fear. Marshall has been lucky. Grant knows only too well that the TT circuit doesn't give many second chances. Despite his fears, Marshall knows he must go out again. Race day is tomorrow, and he has to regain his confidence in both his machine and himself. Back in the saddle, and confidence is restored. Only an hour later, Roger is back to his normal self. I won't say I've had a lot of salads this week, but... <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts of tomorrow's race are put aside, and the family spirit of the team is evident as they relax in an atmosphere of jokes and laughter. Well, I'd like to be a film star. Yeah. Oh, no say I look like David Essex. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on.